here's a rather curious tape recorder I found and I paid three dollars and ninety nine cents for it. I bought this along with my RCA Victor six tube radio for the same price. Um, anyway, this machine doesn't it look to you like it's rather high quality. I mean, it's got lots of brushed aluminum, which on this particular model is actually rather dented. It even weighs a lot. They even put a chrome trim on the front and well over the sides. I mean, it looks like the 1970s. I mean, of course, there's no wood grain naturally, but you get the idea. They even got a mustard sort of colored bright yellow record thing. You can't really see it very well on this particular angle. There, now you can see it. Now, this tape recorder is manufactured by Candle, which is one of those funnier names to say. It's fun to say Candle, the Google on the end. The same folks who got my TV, or who built my TV set, well, it wasn't actually built by Candle, rebadged, re whatever. But I've got a Candle TV set, I've got a Candle, one of these, I've got a Candle radio cassette recorder, I've got a Jutan International Walkie Music Walkman, I've got an ICO ATP705, which is actually my second video on YouTube. I got that, uh, no, third. And that was all from Jutan International. Now, they're renowned for being cheap, which is actually surprising because they did a pretty damn good job building, guy, building this guy. I mean, look how heavy this, this thing is. Heavy. It doesn't even have batteries in it, it weighs a lot. It's got automatic stop and internal microphone, which is here. Record, rewind, fast forward, play, and stop and eject. There's a weakest link I'd like to point out on this slider. And the volume control's on the front, which is a slider control. And there's a little numbered scale in there with a little circle in this thing so you can see. I'll unplug the AC line so that you can see this better. On the side, we've got an earphone and a microphone and remote. Nothing on the back. Bottom's not really got anything interesting on it. And you've got your... AC input, and these two push buttons on either side. You push this in, and the little lugs will come out. I'll remove the handle for the remainder of the video. It's just made of the fabric, and this thing's strong. Um, it has the exact same transport mechanism and circuitry as my Rex in a CT500, although this is a bit more refined. I'm going to pop in the cassette, and I'll point out the Rikus link. And I'll also tell you about a manufacturing defect. Now, down in here, you can't see it because the stupid lighting in here is terrible. I've got an idea. No, the reflection of the paper doesn't work either. Anyway, there's a little tiny catch tab down in there. And because it's made out of plastic and the catch lever here, which you can actually see that little shiny thing, actually has worn away the plastic. And if I'm not careful, I actually close it and I press that. Actually, I'll put the set in first. I push this down, push it down, and I let go. Sometimes I'll forget, but I just try to most of the time. Oh yeah, and the record button, the little metal thing was on backwards. The RO was pointing to the top, and these are all shaped like tombstones, and they're all going the right way. And when I was playing with this thing when I got it, I'd hit like stop, and then one of the freaking metal things would fly off. And I replaced, re-glued that one, that one, and the, these three, or actually these four. The play has the classic loose bit. But anyway, enough of my babbling. Let's go on to the t sound of the machine. The erase head does not work very well. Let's try the usual scheme of testing one, two, three, four, testing one, two, three, four, on the candle cassette recorder, which boasts automatic stop and automatic level control. My internal condenser microphone is very, very loud. And I meant noise wise. It becomes much more apparent when I try plugging in a dynamic microphone, like I am now, is that I'm DC bias. If you haven't already noticed, I'm now testing the candle with the Craig microphone, which is an old 1960s style dynamic microphone, which does not have a pop filter, which probably amplifies the fact that this is a DC bias tip recorder. And I don't even, or it doesn't even have a, um, what is it called again? Oh yeah, auxiliary plug. I don't know why I forgot that. But anyway, let's try this thing with a different microphone to see whether it makes it any better. 
That was a bit where I entered the microphone. I am now trying the candle with a more modern dynamic microphone, which does use a pop filter. It's a Sanya microphone, which is black and chrome, just like this particular cassette recorder. No remote. It's rather surprising that this machine is a DC bias cassette recorder, though I should have expected it with this particular brand. They usually aren't very good quality. Although this one is really beefy. It really does deserve an AC bias um, circuit. Unfortunately, oddly and strangely, this machine has exactly the same drive mechanism as my Rex in a CT... Or not CT JT1107. Yeah, CT500, that's it. Which I have been doing work on. Let's see how this comes out. I'm now going to play music afterwards. Even though it's DC bias that I've mentioned for the umpteenth time. Testing the erase head. I can hear it, so therefore it does not work very well. When they say fast forward rewind is fast, they mean it. I accidentally opened up the automatic level control slightly. WMG cannot come after me for this screen because it sounds so terrible when I bought the record. I'll tell you how it's supposed to sound. This is the actual one that I recorded off of. Okay, we're satisfied with that, hopefully. It plays back music very well, it looks neat. Unfortunately, its recording is terrible. Of course, that's not entirely its fault, but more or less the manufacturer's fault. But it does work, which is the main thing. Although, if it did actually have a working ear, I said I probably would actually use it as a portable machine. Although I don't have four C cells on hand. Maybe some other time. But while well, we're actually here, and we just crossed the 9 minutes 11 second barrier, um, what do you, um, actually, I'd like to pose a question out. What would cause a Technix RS M58 compact cassette recording deck to all of a sudden just stop recording all out? It recorded just fine, but now it longer records. Also, what would cause somebody to get electrocuted by a Technics RS-18? Not the M58, but the, F the M18. Because a friend of mine keeps buying Technics cassette decks because mine is a good one, and he keeps buying bad ones. And they keep going up to either destroy his tapes or kill him. Well, not so much the killing, but you know.
You get the idea. If anybody knows any information, I think I have the idea for the F for the M18. But if anybody can tell me anything about the M58, not stop, just abruptly stop recording completely. Let me know, please. Hope you've enjoyed the presentation of the candle tape recorder, which is DC BIOS, which you all know by now if you've actually watched the video. Bye, all.